every asp.net web form developer when think about moving towards asp.net mvc what is the first question which comes to his mind as per my experience everybody ask me, everybody ask me only one question in the beginning what should i do for grid view where will i find grid view as a asp.net web form developer where we are very much used to with controls like grid view and in asp.net mvc we don't have support for any server control so this is the biggest fear factor for every web form developer that how will i include grid view here so in this video we will learn the same we will learn how to incorporate grid view in asp.net web forms and how to work with them now in asp.net mvc there are multiple ways to do something if you want to implement grid view then there are very there are various ways if you are a jquery fan then what you can do is use manual use manual jquery coding write some manual code implement paging implement sorting dynamically create table tr etc and bring grid view here if you are a angular fan then shoes are already explained how we can create grid view using angular now other than these two approaches there is a third approach in microsoft in asp.net mvc uh, you might have heard about helper functions like @html.textbox for @html.dropdown list for etc similarly we have one helper function which will let us create grid views so that what that that's what we are going to learn here now before we get into that helper function let's first create some ingredients like let's create model right click add new class customer and let me create three properties inside it prop string customer name prop string and address prop double tab int h done next we need view model view model is nothing but view a uh, model specific to model a uh, view sorry i mean to say model specific to view we already have a dedicated video describing view model you can go through it and understand uh, view model in detail let name name this folder as view models and then let's create one more class inside this view models folder let's name this class as grid vm enter now let's create a simple property inside it prop list of customer customers and in order to get this customer we have to put a using here so let me put using uh, mvc grid dot models next let, let's right click this controller folder and add new controller mvc5 empty controller add we'll name this controller as let's say grid sample controller i'll say add it will create a new controller for us and it will contain a default action method that is index let's reuse this index action method and next what we will do is we will create a method uh, we will create object of grid view model definitely for that we need this using statement in the top so let's click on it and it will simply put using statement in the top automatically v is equal to new grid view model and v dot get cust sorry v dot customers equal to get customers this dot get customers this dot get customers so control dot enter so it will simply create a method here now just to make this video simple what i'll do is i'll just copy the get customer code from my notepad and i'll put it here as you can see it's a simple code what i'm doing is i'm simply creating a list of customer and adding 100 customers inside it dynamically again i'm doing it hard coded but you can do it dynamic using entity framework or some other approach okay for this customer again we need namespace so either press control dot or simply press press this blue arrow and it will show you using mvc grid dot model just click on it and it will simply add this uh, using statement here and we are done next we will create view 
let's right click this action method say add view index it should not be empty without model it should be simple empty so that we can go and select model as grid VM then say add it will create a new view for us and now we'll start our uh, start creating this view first we will put at the rate at the rate enter and then here we will create where v or grid is equal to web grid new web uh, sorry yeah new web grid and we have to pass the model object or we can say the data source so in our case data source is going to be model dot customers fine comma you have to specify a couple of properties like do you want paging yes so I'll say can page can page colon true comma can sort colon true comma page rows per page is going to be 10 etc and then semicolon because we want paging we have to put pager so let me simply say grid dot page and I'll say uh, here you will see a couple of options like web grid page mode right so I'll say web grid page modes dot next previous we want both next and previous right so next previous done next what we should do is we have to display it here so I'll simply say at the rate grid dot get HTML it will simply read display grid view here without any effort so what we did first we created object of grid view passing data source enabling paging enabling sorting set the number of uh, rows in per page that is 10 so in every page it will show 10 records then we said the pager is going to be uh, going to show both next and previous buttons so and finally we are saying whatever HTML it returns just display it here so we are using helper function for creating grid view let's execute and see let's see what we, what we will actually get let's press f5 in the URL let's put slash grid sample slash index which is nothing but our action method and controller press enter oh there's an error object reference not set to an instance of an object the reason for this error is simple press f5 we are using this model here but we are not passing it from here so that's the error so let's pass this V here and it will solve the error let's press F5 again and then let's simply press refresh here and you can see the grid here let's click on sorting as you can see see the records are sorting now 99 0 is at the top age customer name third page fifth page everything is working but it doesn't look good right so let's go back to our view and let's use some CSS so now if you check this grid get HTML method it has some uh, parameters like table style I'll say grid comma you have something called as header style so I'll say header style going to be grid header oh sorry this should be in a double quotes so I'll say grid and comma you'll see alternate row style equal to I'll say colon alternate row okay now let's go to our head tag let's put a style tag here and then let's define this CSS class first one is grid header so let me say grid header space TD means all the TDs inside grid header it should be background color is going to be let's say light I'm not good in colors okay so I'm just doing it for demonstration purpose and I'll say all the other grid TDs should be dot TD is going to be background color oh sorry dot grid space td that means 
std inside dot grid class so i'll say here background color is going to be let's say light what we call it as the let's say gray and then we will say alternate row dot td and let me put a css style here i'll say background color is going to be light l i g h t light let's say pink <laughs> as i said i'm not good in color so now let's go to our ui and let's press refresh okay now it looks somewhat good right so now what we can do is uh, why this tree didn't apply it because it should be th because it's header right so i'll say reload now okay it's there but still it doesn't look good right so we need some kind of border here so what i'll do is i'll say border colon one pixel solid black for td let me press reload now okay but we need border for this th as well so let me do the same for this th let's say refresh but still this gap and all it doesn't look good so let's go back to our grid sorry go back to our style tag and let's define one more class that is grid which is nothing but our entire table and i'll say border hyphen collapse going to be collapse say reload now it looks good in formatting but we can do it better let's put some spacing between this text and border and let's also format this footer let's go back to visual studio and just after this alternate alternate row parameter let's pass one more parameter that is footer style and let's just set it to grid footer now let's copy this and let's define it here we'll say grid footer td and we'll set background color to light green now you may be wondering when css class is grid footer why we are setting background color to grid footer dash space td the reason is we cannot set background color to tr that is table row that's why we are doing it for td same applies for grid header alternate row etc and as we discussed earlier we also need to put spacing between text and border so we can do it here we'll say padding colon space 3 pixel now let's go back to our chrome let's say refresh now it looks better let's go back to first page it also looks good next let's say we don't want to display this address column here and we also want to customize these headers like instead of showing customer name we have to we want to display customer space name so for that we'll go back to our visual studio source and here there is one more parameter available called columns okay let me put press enter here to make it readable colon grid grid is nothing but our object okay grid dot columns and it will simply ask me the list of columns which i want so i'll put i'll put it like this and here i'll say grid dot column i'll say i want customer name in the beginning instead of address comma the header is going to be customer name comma second column i'm expecting is h comma h okay done now let's go back to our chrome let's press refresh great awesome next let's display address just after this customer zero or customer name but in the same column so for that let's go to our html again and here after this customer name customer space name which is our header we'll put one more parameter that is format colon now here you have to understand user syntax properly so i'll say at the rate 
text that means I'm going to write an HTML in between this okay so if you put whatever inside between uh, between this that is going to be considered as HTML okay I'll say let's say sample and let's refresh here and check so as you can see sample is coming here right so now if I want something dynamic here so what I, I what I should do is I should put add the rate here so I say add the rate item dot unfortunately we will not get any intelligence here we have to type everything so I'll say customer name let's go to our Chrome let's press refresh customer name is coming now we need to put bracket so if I put like this it will give you it will give me compiler because it will consider this customer name as function but if I put space then whatever I'll put here that is going to be considered as again straightforward HTML for example if, if I put it like this it will display this sample has it is but it will evaluate the value of this customer name and then it will display okay let's check press refresh now we'll see that customer 0 will be displayed as it is sorry customer 0 is coming as a customer name but sample is coming as it is now here we again want to display some dynamic coding so we'll again put at the rate item dot we need address and as I said again we need to press space here otherwise it will not work and now we'll come here press refresh and we are done next let's understand how to put custom columns like edit or something like that now for edit button we can follow the same approach uh, we'll go to our source code put comma enter grid dot column but this time we will not be bound to some specific column so we will directly start with format we are not interested in any kind of header or something and then we will say at the rate text and now whatever we will put between this is going to be considered as HTML so we will say anchor tag href is going to be hash because we are not interested in redirecting and then on click we will invoke a simple javascript function that is edit customer and then we will say edit it's going to be the text and here we, we are interested in passing some parameter so single quotes at the rate item which will give us current uh, item in the data source dot we will not get any intelligence we will say customer name now let's go and refresh uh, this URL and let's see whether it is working or not first refresh edit is here let's check the source of this edit button and as you can see on click edit customer and in the bracket customer 0 is passed if you check the second one it is customer 1 that means the one we are expecting is generating now let's create the javascript function that it edit customer and proceed further so after the style tag we will create a script tag and then we will create a function called edit customer and accept customer name as argument let me remove this extra e and then what we will do is we will make a ajax call from here ajax call to action method which we will create here so we will create an action method here public action result action result edit edit customer string customer name so when we click on the edit button when we click on this edit link I mean to say this JavaScript edit customer will get invoked and from here using Ajax we will make a request to this edit customer action method and here we will simply return content result as received colon plus customer name please note in real in real scenario you will do some database communication you will get some result and you may return some JSON result or you may return some partial view result whatever but in this demonstration just for demonstration purpose 
I am returning content result but will it work no why because this customer name will always come as null the reason for that is our route config file if you check the route config file you will realize that here we have kept route name as ID we have to change it as customer name then only this customer name will get the value which will which we will pass from here now next in order to make a Ajax call we need jQuery file so in the script folder we have it here let's take it and oh sorry and we'll take it and we'll simply drag it to our page now we can use the jQuery functions here and here we will simply say dollar dot get edit customer please note this edit customer is nothing but it's the action name comma we want to pass customer name as argument so customer name is equal to plus customer name which is this one dot done now this dot done whatever uh, whatever function we pass as a callback to this done function will be invoked when our action method completes execution so I'll say function r semicolon and we'll simply say alert r now let's press f5 and let's see what we will get oops it looks like something is broken let's try to understand the reason for this error now in our route config we said that we are going to accept three parameters controller name action and customer name but we are not passing any third parameter here and that is the reason it is saying not found now you may ask me a question but earlier it was working right the reason for that is earlier we specified the parameter here is going to be ID and we say ID is optional so that's why it was working we have to pass max two parameter in that case but now we didn't specify any default value for this customer name so it is must to pass third parameter so if you pass the third parameter like this it will work but if you won't pass any parameter it will always end up with not found so the one solution will be always pass this third parameter or simply make this customer name optional like this now you will get the expected output execute it simply click on refresh and you will see that it will work with even two parameters now see here two parameters and it is working let's click the edit button as you can see we are getting the message received customer 0 let's click on another one received customer 1 now let's go back to our source code let's put a breakpoint in this edit customer method and let's confirm that it's actually working let's go back to Chrome let's click on edit as you can see the breakpoint got hit customer name contained customer 1 and we now we are returning content result which will ultimately come to this done function and this R will contain that content, res content result and it will be displayed in alert so let's press F5 and here it is now before we end this uh, video let's uh, let me introduce to you or let me explain you one more feature and that feature is Ajax in paging and sorting so let me go back to our source code and in this web grid constructor if I press comma you will see one more parameter is there that is Ajax update container ID I'll put it as in double quotes due grid and then I'll simply copy this string from here and this entire get HTML what I'll do is I'll simply encapsulate inside a due I'll simply take it and I'll put it here and this due will be decorated with an ID pro attribute whose value will be due grid and in order to work with Ajax we need jQuery which is already there which we which we have used for this edit customer functionality now let's say save 
let's come here let's say refresh and now let's click on this customer name link you will see that see it's getting sort it, it is getting sorted okay if you if I try with age it is still working paging it's working and just check this icon there is no refresh only grid is getting updated so it's that simple if you want to implement paging and sorting in Ajax manner in web grid you have to simply imp uh, include this jQuery file and after that you simply need this Ajax update container ID and this is all about web grid hope you enjoyed thank you